There's a reason every serious bushcrafter eventually becomes obsessed with primitive fire-making. It isn't nostalgia. It isn't some romantic idea of living like our ancestors. It's because early humans, long before recorded history, solved one of the hardest survival challenges with nothing but raw materials and ingenuity. And honestly, when you dig into the archaeological evidence, you find something surprising. Neanderthals weren't fumbling around waiting for lightning-struck trees. They had deliberate fire-making systems, kits, tools and techniques refined over tens of thousands of years. What they built was so effective that parts of it still form the backbone of modern bushcraft. For the first minute here, I want you to really understand what that means on a practical level. When you see a bushcraft expert strike flint and steel, when you watch someone create a tinder bundle, when you hear debates about the best char material or the most reliable spark source, you're not watching a modern hobby. You're looking at the preserved legacy of early humans who lived in freezing climates, hunted massive animals, and had no fallback plan if their fire went out. Their methods survived because they worked in conditions where failure meant death. That is why studying Neanderthal fire systems isn't academic, it's deeply practical. These people mastered repeatable ignition techniques long before metallurgy, matches, or manufactured fuels. And, well, when a method remains unchanged for 40,000 years, you pay attention. Neanderthals relied on a repeatable system built around flint and iron-rich minerals. Archaeological finds across Europe show a consistent pattern. Flint nodules paired with iron pyrite or marcasite. This combination, stone against sulphide mineral, creates a shower of hot sparks when struck correctly. It's the predecessor of the flint and steel kit carried by woodsmen for centuries. Neanderthals weren't relying on chance friction or random embers. They had a chosen set of materials that produce predictable results. To apply this today, you can replicate a similar setup using modern flint or chert and a piece of natural pyrite. The striking motion is slightly different from using hardened steel. It requires glancing blows that shave off tiny fragments of iron sulphide, which ignite as they oxidize. It takes practice but once you learn the angle and force, it becomes surprisingly reliable. A person learning bushcraft today can treat this exactly the way a Neanderthal would have, as a skill that improves with repetition until it's muscle memory. They understood the importance of prepared tinder rather than relying on luck. Neanderthals didn't just strike sparks into piles of whatever material was lying around. Excavations consistently reveal traces of intentionally chosen and often processed tinder materials such as dried fungi, shredded bark, and grass fibers. The most famous is amadou, taken from the tinder fungus Fomes fomentarius, which has been used by humans for millennia because of how well it catches a spark. For a modern practitioner, learning to identify and prepare natural tinder is one of the most useful survival skills you can develop. If you want to follow in the footsteps of early humans, you can collect punk wood, birch bark, cattail fluff or bracket fungus and experiment with how each responds to sparks. One of the best exercises is to take a piece of amadou or similar material and gradually scrape it into softer fibres, then test how easily it takes a spark from flint and pyrite. This process teaches you two things at once, the character of the material and the discipline required to make natural tinders dependable.
Neanderthal campfire design reveals how they protected ignition materials in harsh climates. Fire traces found in ancient shelters show that Neanderthals routinely used stones, soil, and dugout pits to create wind-resistant fire sites. This wasn't accidental. They were controlling oxygen flow, insulating coals, and protecting embers from sudden gusts. They even maintained long-burning embers overnight, so they didn't have to start fresh every morning, a habit many skilled bushcrafters still use. If you want to implement this, you can build a simple fire pit with a ring of stones and a slight depression to shield coals. Once you've established a fire, burying a few glowing coals in ash before sleeping helps retain heat for hours. In the morning, you can expose one of these preserved coals, feed it with tinder, and bring the fire back to life with a fraction of the effort. This method, documented in both archaeological evidence and traditional cultures, is one of the most practical Neanderthal techniques you can incorporate immediately into modern camping or survival routines. Their fire kits were portable, organized, and intentionally curated. Neanderthals weren't wandering around with random stones. Many habitation sites show that their flint came from quarries kilometers away, proving deliberate gathering and transport. This tells us their fire-making gear was part of a toolkit carried from place to place. It may have been stored in leather pouches or wrapped in plant fibers, but the key point is that it was kept together, protected, and ready. For a modern counterpart, creating a portable kit is extremely useful. If you want to honor the original principle, build a small set of fire tools that you always keep together. A striking stone, a spark-producing mineral or steel striker, tinder material, and a container. The container doesn't have to be primitive. It can be metal, leather, or cloth. What matters is that the core concept, a compact curated system that is always ready to use, is exactly the same as what early humans depended on. Neanderthal firemaking survives in today's bushcraft because the fundamentals never stopped working. What makes this topic so valuable is that it bridges tens of thousands of years of human experience. The techniques weren't lost because they never stopped being useful. Whenever someone takes flint and steel into the woods today, they are practicing the same principles Neanderthals once used to survive bitter winters and shifting climates. If you want more content that connects deep history with practical outdoor skills, you can apply right now. Make sure you subscribe to Backyard Wisdom, share this guide, and stay tuned for the next episode.